They said it couldn't be done. They said it was impossible. But I knew they were wrong. Before I left home, I told them all I would find it. I would find a MOBA that was as good, if not better, than League of Legends or Dota 2. I traversed wide oceans, climbed rocky cliffs, stubbed my toe on several angry rattlesnakes, and now, in a remote region of Africa, I think I may have found it. Salutations friends, my name is Jonathan, and did you know there's actually more MOBAs out there besides just League of Legends and Dota 2? If neither of those games are quite your taste, or if you're just looking for something new, then this show is definitely for you. Over the course of the next who knows how many weeks, we're going to be taking a look at every single MOBA we can get our hands on, and I'll be letting you the viewers know whether we found an instant classic, or if you're just better off uninstalling. Welcome to the show everyone, and let's get started. Today we're taking a look at Smite, and this is going to be one of the better known MOBAs that I end up covering during this series. I just wanted to start off with something that's a bit more recognizable for you viewers, and once we're all acquainted, I'll get into the really weird and obscure stuff. I'm going to be brief on the explanation of the MOBA genre, because I assume if you're watching this, you probably know what a MOBA is. But, just in case you don't, welcome! And a MOBA is a multiplayer online battle arena where two teams fight one another to gain control of or destroy the enemy's base. The two teams level up and gain items over the course of the match, and players use their items and abilities to gain an advantage over their opponents. It's a very generic definition, I know, but hopefully that helps you understand the core idea of these games. Getting back to Smite, this is a MOBA created by the company High res Studios, and the game's main gimmick is that it has a third-person perspective instead of the typical top-down view we're generally familiar with. Its hero pool is also unique because the characters the game uses are based off of mythological characters from real-world mythology. This includes beings such as Thor from The Avengers, Cupid from Valentine's Day, and Ra, of course, from the sun. Like I've already said, this game is quite popular as it is, and even though I don't have any data to back up this claim, I would easily rank this as one of the top five most popular MOBAs in the world right now. So if you do end up playing this game, you'll have plenty of people to play it with. But that's enough with formalities. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Is the game worth playing? Yes, I would definitely say so. It's a free, with quotations, free to play game, and not only is it on PC, it's also on Xbox One and the PS4. So if you've only got a console, but you still want a slice of that sweet mobile pie, then without a doubt, this has got to be your go-to game. However, if you're part of the PC Master Race and you're already firmly entrenched in League World or Dota Land, does this game have anything in it that would make you want to leave your well-worn trenches and go explore the other side of the fence? Well, let's dive a bit deeper and see, shall we? I've already pointed out to you the two main ways that Smite is able to distinguish itself from the other games on the market. It's in third person, and its characters come from various mythologies throughout history. The characters are neat, and the source material is creative, that's for sure. But the point I want to focus most on is the third person point of view. It may not seem like much at first, but I assure you, the shift in perspective radically changes how you play the game, and it gives Smite a feel that is impossible to replicate with a drawn back camera like in Dota or in League. Everything feels more intimate and action packed. And if you see your teammate fire off a death laser in Dota, you say, good job, and then you move on with the game. In Smite, however, you're right next to the guy as he's firing that laser. You see this giant ray of pure energy zoom across the map and zap the poor sucker it was aiming at. This is Smite's thing, and this is going to sound cheesy, but this perspective makes everything you do feel more important, and you can more greatly appreciate what's going on when you have the camera right in the thick of the action. However, it's not all rainbows and butterflies, because third person will inevitably have a few problems. Since the camera is so tightly focused on your character, you aren't really able to see and receive as much information as you would in League or Dota. What I mean by this, okay, so you're in a match of League, and you have a much wider range of vision, so if someone's sneaking up from behind to attack you, you can see it sooner and better react to the situation. In Smite, however, since the camera is up so close to you, you won't be able to see the attackers unless your character is physically turned in their direction. This does make higher levels of strategy with your team more difficult to orchestrate and to pull off, but this is not necessarily a deal breaker. Since this camera handicap applies to everyone playing and not just yourself, no one's really at a disadvantage, like if you've all got broken legs, you know, you'll all play the same. Sure, it can be frustrating when the other team gets the jump on you because you weren't looking in their direction, but on the other side of the coin, you could just as easily do the same thing to them at another point in the match. I didn't expect this to happen, but the close-up camera also makes the game a whole lot easier to play. So if you're turned off to MOBAs because of their difficulty and learning curve, Smite's still got that stuff, but you may also find this game just a little bit more friendly and accessible for you. Speaking of accessibility, Smite has this 
this super noob-friendly feature where you can have the game automatically level you up and buy items for you. Now, before you yell heresy, this was actually a really neat feature. Having never touched this game before, and therefore knowing absolutely nothing about how things worked, I absolutely loved this feature. In a typical MOBA game, besides having to worry about not getting yourself killed, you also need to know what abilities you need to level up first, and what items you need to purchase in order to counter your opponents. New players would have no idea what to do at first, so Smite once again made itself accessible. This auto-level system allowed me to stay focused on the actual playing of the game, and not be immediately bogged down by dozens of strange new items and abilities. You can turn this feature off once you think you've got a good handle on the mechanics, and I applaud the game for including this feature. Another thing I really liked about Smite was the community feature. If you're new to the game and want to find a group of friends to play with, then you just hit up the clan search system and the game helps you look for groups of people near your level who want other people to play with them. This is such an awesome addition to the game, and I cannot tell you how many people there are who've quit MOBAs just because they couldn't find any friends to play with them. If you want to play this game but don't have any friends to do it with, simply hit the community button, find a clan you want to join, and within minutes you'll be playing a match of Smite with your new friends. Seriously, why do other games not do this feature? I want to try and compare this game to the other MOBAs on the market so you can have some sort of comparison, and I just wanted to come out and let you know at the forefront that this is actually only the third MOBA game that I've ever really played, the other two of course being Dota 2 and League of Legends. So based on these past experiences, I would have to say that Smite plays plays and controls like a mix of both games, but it definitely borrows more elements from League than from Dota. Unfortunately, the inspiration it took from League of Legends also extends to its business model. So when you first start playing Smite, you're given a handful of characters that you're allowed to play with. These characters you're given are fine, but if you want to play as any of the hundred or so other characters in the game, you're gonna have to either acquire in-game currency to pay for them, or pony up and pay real-world money instead. I don't like this business model, and I feel like the Dota 2 approach where all heroes are available from the get-go is a much more consumer-friendly practice. However, to the game's credit, there is a purchase plan they have called the Ultimate God Pack, which does alleviate most of my concern. For $15, you can immediately purchase every single character in the game, plus you have access to every other hero that the game will ever release. Think of it as a season pass. That is a fantastic value, and when you look at the massive amount of characters on roster, it will save you a lot of money. So much more than if you bought all the characters one at a time. What I would recommend is that you play the game for a couple weeks and see if you really like it. If you want to take the plunge, buy the Ultimate Gods pack afterwards and get all the characters at once. If you've decided that you want this to be your MOBA of choice, then I don't think you'll be disappointed with the purchase. To conclude, Smite is the kind of game that looked at the wheel and instead of trying to reinvent it, decided to add a sweet new paint job instead. Besides the setting and new perspective, you won't find anything too groundbreaking or different from what we've seen in the market already. This is, however, the most noob-friendly and easy-to-get into MOBA that I have ever played, and although it copies a lot of ideas from other games, it does the copying really well. I would personally recommend Smite, and if anything that I've said sounds appealing, then you should go and give the game a try. You can download it for free on Steam, and if it's your first time playing the game, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching everyone, and have a great day.